Alright, so we have just stopped the volcano on the Fire Island from erupting. Well, one of them at least. There's a, there's a bunch that's over, I don't know, it's loading in probably. It's over there somewhere. Uh, and then we got a vision as we were talking to Raban, one of the, well, the only, uh, one of two stone dwarves we've actually met in this game. We had a vision of the egg, Glint's egg, hatching in the Maguma jungle. Like, so, so we now need to get back to Taria quickly because also in the vision we saw that it could be in danger. So like, let's move. Dragon Egg. Alright. Uh, some minor graphical and internet issues. Whatever. Let's get inside. Commander, thank Glint. We tried to get word to you. I contacted your friends to see if they could locate you too. The Egg called to me. Is everything okay? Yes, most okay. It's hatching, Commander. Flint's second scion will soon be here. That's... we should get inside. Marjorie and Case. You called Case too. I wasn't called, but I was nearby and word spread fast. This is very exciting. Where's Ritlock? I thought he was with you. He's... indisposed. Ruka, can we all go in? I'm sorry, but you're still the only one attuned to the chamber. The magical barrier will not allow us. Great. I'll just stay out here with Kit, the glowy guy. It will give us a chance to catch up, Marjorie. Don't be gone too long, Commander. I love how everyone's really awkward around her. Um, because yeah, she did just betray us and nearly get us all killed before, so I can imagine that's a bit... But yeah, a bit weird. Uh, and also... The Asuro, like at least the male voice actor, I haven't, I haven't had the female one, um, went for this scene, it's fantastic, like, in this one it's just kind of like awkward, it's like, oh, you got you got brought Kate here too, and like, the male Asuro practically shits himself, he's like, oh, hi, I have no idea how to respond to this, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, see you, <laughs> like, it's, it's so good, um, anyway, do you have anything more to say? No? No? Okay, let's go. instinctively to run across a big room. I love this place. I, well, I have mixed feelings about it due to the, uh, the, the, uh, race or whatever it is. It's an adventure around the top, which annoyed the fuck out of me for many years because bad PC and bad internet is very bad for precise jumping, which is what you need. Um, but I do love the design of this room visually. It's quite cool. The shield effect is very nice.
coming up from anywhere else. Hopefully not. I need you. Charge. Let's use this on this. Oh fuck. No, no. Ah oh, shit. Stop. Alright, so if I recall. Yep. Oh, I hate these events. Alright, that heal works pretty well. What is that? It's scaring the fuck out of me. Um. Fast. Okay, they're coming around the other side too. Uh, where's the explosive coming from? Oh fuck. Okay, so it just generates normally. Boy, over the ball on its own. Um, hi. Please die. I don't want the ones that can evade to stay off for very long because they can get really dangerous. Destroyers up those stairs and give the dragon a wide berth, Lazarus. It would be a pity to have your second life be short lived. All right, so I guess the Mossad is helping us now. <laughs> Again, to be fake and surprised, but this is honestly one of my favorite story beats in the entire game. Living World Season 3 was just so damn good. But yeah, like. like his, his motivations are still really mysterious. Like, what what does he want? Why is he helping us? Like, what? Like, just, did, did he disable the defenses? Is this why the destroyers even got in? I mean, like, could this be a ploy to earn our trust? Hell of a ploy. I mean, could he be wanting to? I mean, he's clearly capable of absorbing magic, like, and, and not like sort of going nuts like an old dragon, depending on how much. I mean, could he be after the dragon as well? to talk to him. Dead now. Our call is a boss. Should be appearing soonish. Lazarus, what are you up to? What's happening? Oh! Turn. Okay, just oh this guy, right. Uh if I recall, I can okay, roll and chill. Uh, can I even hurt this thing? Not much. Alright, I hit him with the explosive that they use, I believe. Because I think he's made himself a bit more vulnerable to fire. Because using some of the other magic types. Did, I, did that work? Oh shit, this. Okay. 
Okay. Alright, getting some fucking damage in. Get some madness down in a second. Oh fuck, move. We got held up outside. Destroyers... What's happening? It's done, Commander. The barrier has been restored. The Scion of Glint is safe. Nah. Not until that Mersat is out of here. A Mersat? The Forgotten passed on tales of these creatures. I never thought I'd encounter one. You are the Dragon's champion and shepherd. But may I suggest purging this impurity directly? The Mersat I was in the Tales of the Forgotten is dead. I have been reborn, and rising from the void brings with it a new perspective. We previously sought power through treacherous means, only to save ourselves with the dragon dreams. But now, I see we must all stand against the dragons to save everyone. You hope to align yourself with me? You have killed two, have you not? Our interests are the same. The fire dragon is rising. I cannot stand idly by and repeat past mistakes. My actions since returning prove me a useful ally. Like when you destroyed the bloodstone. The Bloodstone was destabilized by years of misguided white mantle tinkering. I did absorb the blast to repower myself, but also, how many countless lives were saved? What's the angle you're running? What's in an alliance for you? The salvation of this world. The white mantle is splintering. Those who follow Codicus and those loyal to me. I can make them a force for good. Another spear and an army against the dragons. This is the same accord the Mursat struck with the Forgotten. Then, they simply broke their word and disappeared. That was a cowardly act of self-preservation, and something I will not repeat. You seem earnest enough, so I hope you'll understand when I tell you there's no way I can agree to this. You speak of transparency, but I can't keep an eye on you at all times. I have an idea, Commander. I'll do it. I'll dig into his claim. And if Lazarus is truly changed, we can reassess the situation. I welcome any inquiries. Oh, it'll be much more than that. I'm going to be embedded with you, shadow your every move. Marjorie, can I speak with you a moment? What are 
are you doing? He absorbed the Bloodstone's power. We obviously can't just easily put him down if his story doesn't check out. He's touched death, Commander. And now he's back. There's something... The Necromancer in me wants to find out more. And... who knows? I can't let you do that. It could be a trap. It's probably a trap. It's almost certainly a trap. There's something about him. It makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up. And I can't tell if it's in a good way or a bad way. He's a floaty bird man, of course. He makes your hair stand up. I'm glad to be a part of Dragon's Watch. And I appreciate you looking out for me. But I won't be told what I can or can't do. Uh, but, but, but I'm in charge, Marjorie. Stop it. Stop. Stop. Okay. But... Hang on. Are they gonna do anything? Before I, before I start talking and they cut me off? Eh? Eh? Lazarus, okay. let's move out. We have a lot to talk about, my floaty new friend. Hmm. Okay, so before I talk to Kaith, a lot to unpack there. First of all, a uh, new dragon running around. Not an elder dragon. The Glint, that was Glint's hatchling. I nearly called it Glint. Glint hatchling. We don't know what her name is. But, um, well, it is a she, that's minus spoiler. But, uh, off you go, floaty man. Um, so, yeah, new dragon, uh, Mosat. And so, interesting, there are two holes, the, well, not holes, but possible discrepancies in his story there. One is, going off Guild Wars 1 knowledge, he, I mean, he said repower himself, not empower himself with the Bloodstone. And maybe he just meant repower because he came back from the dead and being dead is imagine you're not very powerful, but could he mean something else? Like, that's, that's odd. Because surely you'd think he'd just be back up to full strength once he's been properly resurrected. But, so, like, I mean, and Lazarus, I mean, he was pretty tough in the first game. I think he was one of the three Mossad that took on the Char army, so he even took, like, Torek as a particular gripe with him. Um, so he might be particularly powerful among their kind, and maybe there was a reason for that, but it's odd. And also, he said, and he may just be, t and, like, I mean, this whole conversation may just be him saying whatever he needs to say oh yeah we ran away we were horrible and mean and we won't do it again i promise we've changed like he's shit talking his own people when the Mossad were quite proud he may just be saying whatever he needs to despite the fact that he fully believes they were justified running the first time and maybe like maybe he tends to actually help us or maybe it just suits a, a different purpose but there's another discrepancy in uh when well we don't know who's right here but the luminate here she says that the Forgotten and the Mossad Forged Alliance and the Mossad bailed on them at the last minute, but she neglects to mention the, um, like, what, like, and they, what they said, like, she implies they didn't even fight together, but the Mossad tablet we saw in the last episode says they did fight together and then lost and then the Mossad bailed, particularly because the other races weren't helping anywhere near as much. They thought they were all doomed, somewhat justifiably, if that tablet can be believed. And then they ran. But Lazarus doesn't talk about that. He doesn't go, hang on, no, 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 no. We had reasons. We were justified. Fuck you. I'm helping you now, but don't, like, dishonor my people or anything. He's, there's none of that. And again, maybe he's just going all silver tongue and he's trying to sort of get us on his side. And he does believe all these things. So it's hard to say. But it's all around a very mysterious interaction. And Marjorie, I mean, I suppose you would protect something as a necromancer from someone who's some form of undead. Is, that, is he undead if he's been resurrected? It's, it's hard to say. But... Uh, yeah, it, interesting that she's kind of making your own decisions and dragons watch alike when the characters have their own agency. I can't help but feel like I'll be explaining this to Casimir shortly. Given what happened today, I'd feel a little better if someone I knew was watching the chamber. And was no, or nowhere else. Someone you trust. Where she could yes. cause trouble. So, could you ask Timey to get here right away? You're joking with me. I take that as a good sign. You've been a lot of things, Kate. But you've never been an enemy of this dragon. Uh, she might have handed I'll it over to my life for, uh, What should we call it? Her. Her name is Ori. You decided that quite fast. It wasn't a decision. I just knew. Because I said it by accident last then episode. Then no harm will come to Ori while I still breathe. Thanks, Kate. After the coming battle with this changed, more powerful Primordis. I hope any of us are still breathing. Okay. Return to Dragon Vigil completed. What's in this? Shoot. 
Oh, and that's the end of this episode. Okay, good. All right. I wasn't sure if this was the start or the end of the Rising Flames episode. Uh, but yeah, lots of stuff to unpack there. I've unpacked most of it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we've uh, we benched Kate. That we're, I mean, I mean, we're giving her an important duty, of course, of course. Anyway, I feel like that was a nice compact uh, instance there. So I might I might stop the recording here and have that as its own episode. So bye bye. See you in the next one.